In marketing, there is a common idea that you need to build the know, like, trust factors with your audience. Basically, your audience needs to be aware of who you are. They've heard of you from somebody else, maybe, or they've seen your content. They need to like you enough to consider your services. So maybe you can build that through your articles or through the videos you make or uh, through engaging with them one-to-one. -one. And then they need to trust you enough, maybe by being recommended by somebody or seeing your background and how much experience you have or some other trust factors then that, that would make them want to buy your services. Well, I have a similar but, but different framework to present to you in this video that may be even more useful for you. I call this your know, ready, and trust factors. So I think the, the audience that you're talking with need to not just be aware of who you are, but they need to know enough about the context of your services to understand the value of such a thing that you're selling and why they, they and so that they could also imagine themselves buying that kind of thing. So for example, if you had a, a yoga studio in the rural south, of the United States where maybe in a particular community where nobody nobody does yoga and nobody somebody there doesn't even know anybody who does yoga the no factors are very difficult even though they might know who you are because you're in the community they don't understand the context of what yoga is and why it's important why it's valuable and helpful and so a lot of education would need to be done in that kind of circumstance to get people to know that kind of know yoga enough to be interested enough to even consider buying it. Do you see what I mean? So if you can instead talk to an audience that already knows the context of your services. So for example, if you're selling life coaching and you're talking to an audience who has purchased psychotherapy before, or they, they're, they are in an urban community maybe where they, they, where they and in such a culture where they maybe know somebody who's purchased psychotherapy, then that's much easier to educate them into, well, life coaching is maybe similar to psychotherapy in certain ways and different in other ways, do you see? So choose the audience that you're talking to uh, if you, whenever you can, whether it's in a talk or in writing your articles or in knowing where to share your content. Okay, choose the audience that already has some context of the kind of thing that you provide. And if you have, if you're providing a very unique type of service or product, then you do need to do a lot more education of the general public, so that they would then understand your the value of your your industry and your niche enough to be to consider buying it. So build the no factors in that kind of way through education. Okay. Um, the second factor is the ready factors, readiness is about timing. So for example, let's say, let's say you're a barber, you sell haircuts, um, and the, the person walking by your shop knows what haircuts are, they bought them themselves, they know other people who bought haircuts, they know the value of haircuts, but they just got a haircut, okay? So no matter how much you try to hand them a coupon and try to interest them in coming to the salon, they're not ready for that. However, now, I know most of you are building an online presence. So if you can have your audience member follow you on social media or join your mailing list um, so that you can continue to keep in touch with them with helpful ideas, helpful tips, um, valuable suggestions that help their life in the way that you provide in your service, but in a more lighter and more casual way, then that you are continually educating your audience on what your niche is and what the value of your type of service. And when they are ready, the timing of the, the, their life, when their life is ready, then they can then consider buying your services. So readiness can be built by having your audience join your mailing list or uh, follow you on social media or keeping in touch with them in some way uh, that is um, more sustainable for you to, 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 to keep in touch. Uh, readiness also um, has to do with the timing of the year. So if you are selling some kind of life coaching service that's about changing people's life, the New Year's, you know, the first quarter of the year is incredibly important in terms of readiness and timing because people are thinking of New Year's resolutions. They're thinking of a, there's an energy for the new year that is inspiring them to want to change their lives. So they're more ready to maybe hire a coach to do that kind of thing. 
Maybe you sell relationship coaching and then Valentine's Day would be an incredibly important time of year to prepare for, to, for some kind of launch. So think about the readiness of the year as well as the readiness of the person's the ideal reader and ideal client's life. In your content, you should also think about when you're writing an article or you're making a video, think about, okay, the persons that I'm, that, that I'm talking to, what stage of their life are they in right now where they might be ready for this type of content? What, what stage of readiness are they where they would find this content valuable? Okay, or if you're selling your service in a piece of content, then you need to be talking to people who are ready to buy that content, not trying to convince somebody who isn't yet ready. Does that make sense? So think about the readiness stage uh, when it comes to the content that you're creating. And then the third piece of the framework is trust. So once they know about your niche and the value of the kind of thing that you provide, and once they are ready in the stage of their life or in the time of the year that they're, they have the energy to buy it, then they need to trust you enough to say, yes, you are the one that I'm going with. And there are lots of different kinds of trust factors. Uh, on your website, you may, um, you know, trust can, can be related to graphic design. If you have a website that is designed very poorly, unprofessionally, there the readiness, uh, their trust factors goes down immediately. But a, ready, a website doesn't have to be amazingly designed. It simply needs to be clean, professional looking. And I do that kind of work all the time with my clients. So I guess I have a natural eye for that kind of thing. But talk to somebody who has a natural eye for graphic design or marketing to just give you a, a sense of that. Um, you may need to hire a graphic designer or hire a coach to be able to, to give you a professional sense of it. But other trust factors include, uh, does your audience, your ideal client, do they care about some kind of educational pedigree? Uh, maybe they don't. Maybe they don't care about your certification because they don't even know what that means to be a certified something something. But maybe they do. Maybe they care about your PhD or they, um, they care about your years of experience or you've studied with a particular famous person that they, they would care about. Okay? Um, trust factors could also include the testimonials you include on your website and of course the content that you have through your website and through your other uh, online presence that would build the trust with, with your audience so that they can really resonate with you and say, ah, I, can, I feel like I can believe this person and, and work with that person. Um, so think about these three factors of, do, are you educating the public and you're educating your ideal audience enough to understand the value of your type of service and your, of your type of advice or wisdom? So the no factors, think in terms of, of, of that understanding Okay, the readiness factors is thinking in terms of timing and the readiness stage of the person that you're talking to or the audience that you're writing or for or you're creating content for. And think about the ways that you are building trust with your audience through testimonials or through engaging with them um, so that they are ready. Oh, another thing about trust is the options of the offerings that you offer. So if you only offer an expensive thing, you are asking your audience to to go from just a little bit of trust to trusting you greatly in an instance, which is unrealistic. So if you can offer just a few offerings that maybe one is very affordable, one is medium, and one is more expensive, um, then you allow people to trust you in a way that they're, they feel ready. Does that make sense? So somebody might look at your offerings, maybe you have three offerings, an online workshop, a single session with you, and then a package, session, package of sessions with you. The online workshop may be really affordable and they said, you know, I don't know this person well enough, but I, know, I can trust at least just that little bit to buy that cheap online workshop or that book or that you know, video series or something like that. And then maybe after that, they're ready to trust you with a single session. And then after that, they're ready to trust you with a package. Although some people may be following your content for years and they already trust you enough or they got recommended to you by somebody that they really respect and then they may be ready right away to trust you at that higher level. So you do need to have several options for people to choose from that would um, help to uh, meet them where they're at, in other words. Okay. So um, I hope that this is helpful and until the next video, my name is George Cow, and I'm always open to your comments and your questions. Take care.